Today I'm going to start a new series where I'll solve all the 26 challenges of Ethernet. And Ethernet is a platform, a CTF sort of platform, where you have 26 challenges or 26 contracts that are vulnerable and you have to find the vulnerability and exploit it. So we're going to learn about smart contract security. So let's start with the first one, which is Hello Ethernet. For this challenge, of course, you need to have MetaMask. So set up MetaMask first. For each of the levels or challenges, we're going to have a contract. The contract, the vulnerable contract is going to be deployed to the RingB testnet. And we're going to interact with it through this console, which you can open by right clicking inspect. This first level is just getting familiar with how the Ethernet platform works. So we have here in the console, we have Web3 and we have some functions and some variables we can use that we will use like the player variable that just holds your address this is my address we have the get balance function if we pass in our address our player address our account address to this get balance function we'll get our balance we get a promise if we want to get the result use a wait so i have 17 ether as you can see we can clear the console here we can use help to see all of the other available functions we have. We have player, we have Ethernet. This is the main game contract. This is the main contract of the Ethernet platform. We're not going to really interact, I, I don't think, with the Ethernet contract because we'll have a new instance, new contract for each level. For example, we have a two-way function that allows you to convert Ether to way. So if we want to convert 1.2 Ether to way, this is how much way it is. Ethernet is the contract. We can say Ethernet to see the contract and its methods. We can see its address by saying Ethernet.address. If we look up this contract, this is a real contract deployed on the Ringbit testnet. If we will look up this contract and go into the contract source code, go into write contract. These are all the functions you can write to. So this is the contract we use to create new level instances. I'm just looking at this so you can see how things work under the hood. Not really going to create level instances here, but if we go into transaction, you can see a lot of people interacting with this contract every few minutes or so, submitting and creating new level instances. And our contract, our vulnerable contract for each level is going to come in this format and we'll have to use this ABI. ABI is basically all the functions that are available in this contract. And we can see what is really important here to see. We can see the inputs of each function and the output. For example, this owner function does not have any inputs. We can see length zero. The outputs, let's see, it has one output. It's of type address. Let's see who the owner of this contract is by saying ethernet.owner. This is a function, so you have to write this parenthesis here. Say await and bam, we get this address. So to complete this first level, and by the way, this check mark means that I've completed the level. As you can see, this one is not completed. So to complete this level, you have to get for each level, a contract instance, which you can by just clicking get new instance. I've already done mine and I have this contract object now that refers to the vulnerable contract that was deployed to the Ringby testnet. If you see its address and search it up on Ringby, you can see this is a real contract. I have deployed it five days ago. I have requested the instance but, but never completed the challenge. So now let's complete it. The first thing uh, says we should do, we should call the info function on our contract and we should wait for this promise to be resolved. That's what we do with the wait keyword. Now it says it re this function returns that we should info one, call info one. I called info one, now it says we should call info two, but with a hello as a parameter. So we'll do that. It says the property info num holds the number of the next info method to call. So let's call the info num function. This should return a number. It returns an object. And inside words, we have 42. So perhaps this is the number we should use. So let's use 42. Now this method returns that the method name is the name of the next method. Let's call the method name. 
we get another method I'll copy this and just call this method now it says if you know the password submitted to authenticate what does this mean so let's clear this up and say just await contract or maybe just contract works the same and expand this so you can see we have uh, the ABI is basically all the functions as I said that you can use and we have a password function let's expand this let's see if it has any input so it doesn't let's say if it has any output it has a one output as you can see length is one and it is string so maybe this is the password we are looking for so say await contract dot password it returns ethernet zero so let's check out this authenticate function that we have so contract expand authenticate and let's see does this function have any inputs or outputs so go into ABI authenticate and as an input it takes a string so this is the password probably and it doesn't have any output so let's go ahead and say contract dot authenticate and this is where we complete the level and of course paste in the password this will prompt you to submit a transaction to the ring testnet click on confirm so the transaction was mined we can see this on the ring explorer and if you believe you have solved this challenge now click on submit instance this will prompt you to do another transaction after the transaction is mined you should get something like this into the console so which means you have completed the level and you should get this check mark so good job and we get now the source code of the contract we interacted with and this is important to see so we had the password stored inside this string variable this was a function if you remember that we called but whenever you have public variables in solidity solidity basically automatically creates a getter function for them we have the info function that we first called the info one function this is the output that we got remember in the console we have the other methods we have the authenticate method so where we pass the the password and basically that's uh, the level mm -hmm.